Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of this tutorial series for the Phoenix A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This episode 3 focuses on the pushback and correct taxi procedures to the airport as we get ready for our takeoff. However, we're actually going to start this video just looking at the back end of episode 2. And that is because I realized after episode 2 had been uploaded, there was in fact a little issue with the audio right at the end when we come to explaining the final load sheet figures, which is of course quite an important part. So we're just going to jump in so you can now watch the last couple of minutes of episode 2 in this tutorial series with the clean audio after we just received our final load sheet from dispatch. So now all the passengers are seated and the doors are closed, etc. We want to check what the figures for the final load sheet are to make sure that our takeoff performance calculations are still all valid. In order to do this, we'll go to the ATSU menu, to the AOC menu, check our received messages, and we're looking for the load sheet, which is the final load sheet. This is the one that we're after. So we're going to go onto our init B page and we want to just cross check all of these figures. So the actual zero fuel weight is 56.3. That is exactly the same. That's good to know. If it had been more, we may need to rerun some calculations. But what's really good is the Phoenix does actually simulate this. So it will simulate some passengers maybe not turning up for their flight or some baggage being offloaded. So it's important to check. So the zero fuel weight for our flight today is the same. Our takeoff weight is 63.5. Well, that is shown here as less than the takeoff weight shown here. That is good. If our takeoff weight here was shown to be more than the takeoff weight shown here, then we would have to rerun the performance takeoff calculations if it was more than 250 kilograms higher. Anything under that, you could leave it. But more than 250 kilograms higher, you'd need to rerun your performance calculations and get some new V speeds. Let's just scroll down then and see what else we've got. So the zero fuel weight center of gravity is 32.4 but because our takeoff weight is going to be less than what we've got here we don't need to actually go in and update any of these figures all of these figures are still valid our takeoff weight cfg however is 30.5 now this is important because this figure here 30.5 is what we're going to be setting our trim wheel to when we've pushed back we can't do it here at the stand because the fly-by-wire aircraft uses hydraulics it doesn't use cable and pulleys so we can't actually manipulate the trim wheel at this point until we've got engines started but the 30.5 takeoff weight cfg is what we're going to set this to and you'll see that a little bit later on in the tutorial series. This is the figure that we use rather than using on the performance page the up versus down THS as shown here on the uh, on the performance calculator. All that's left to do then is go ahead and click accept and we're all set. So that concludes the second part of this tutorial series with the correct added audio. Apologies for that in episode two that's obviously now been updated and we're now ready to move on to episode three of this tutorial series where we take a look at the full pushback and start up and then taxi out to the runway for our departure from manchester so now the passengers are all loaded the box is all set up we're about ready for pushback of course we just need to finish the uh, cockpit prep so with refueling all complete we can now turn on the uh, fuel pumps on the overhead the APU is powering our aircraft so we can get rid of the external power. And with refueling also complete, let's turn on the seatbelt signs. Other things we need to do then before we start running those final checklists is we'll just check the fuel page and we want to see that we've got the fuel all nicely balanced. You can see the left hand tank slightly lower than the right hand tanks but that's just because the APU has been burning fuel and the APU runs off the left hand side so 100 kilogram or so well within limits no need to concern ourselves any further with that. Before we can push back we need to of course come over to the ground services and from here make sure the GPU has been disconnected and uh, is moved away and we of course want to remove the, uh, the chocks and cones. Right, we're about ready to uh, run the checklists and start getting ready for pushback. So, 
Before start checklist is all completed, our signs are on and auto. Our ideas, we know we have three nav green. We can confirm that on the data page IRS, three nav greens. The fuel quantity is checked 7,890 kilograms and balanced. The FMGS is all set and altimeter is 1010, which is 250 feet for Manchester Airport. So at this point then, if you're on VATSIM, you'd ask uh, ATC if uh, you can get permission to uh, start engines and, uh, and push back. Obviously, for this tutorial, we're not on VATSIM, so we'll go ahead and get the tug connected up. Now, two ways of doing this, you can use an external pushback tool, or you can also use the pushback tool here on the EFB. At the time of filming this tutorial, however, the Phoenix aircraft build does have a little bug with the pushback, and that is the pushback tug kind of only likes to do half a job, so we'll most likely leave us halfway. A fix for that is in the offering, and that may have even already been fixed by the time you're watching this uh, video. So, we are going to call the tug. I'm using an external program for, uh, for this. So, the tug is uh, now coming into position. And we'll say that we've uh, asked ATC for uh, pushback and they've given us permission to push back and start our engine. So once we've got that permission, we're going to uh, turn the beacon light on. We're going to come down, check our acupressure is in the green, which it is. We then want to turn on the transponder to auto. And then as we begin the push, we are going to uh, going to start the timer. Before we do that, of course, we want to check that windows and doors are closed and armed. We can confirm this by looking at the lower ECAM page on the, uh, the doors page. And that shows us any of the doors that are armed has the word slide shown next to it. So the slide means that those doors are not only closed, but they are armed as well. Basically means that if those doors were to, uh, to be open now, the slides would obviously deploy. Hopefully we're not going to need that on the ground here at Manchester, of course. Mobile phone is turned off. Parking brake is currently set to on. So at this point, we're ready to go and we can uh, start the engines. So happy with that. Let's uh, start the timer and we will release the parking brake. Nose wheel steering is disconnected and back we go. As we're going back then, we'll get our engine started. In order to do this, we will set our engine mode selector to ignition and start engine one. When engine one is stabilized and we see the avail sign just here, we can continue and start engine two. Obviously done in exactly the same way. Just flick the engine two switch, which is just there. So engine number two is, uh, is now starting. Once again, we're just waiting for the avail to show on engine two, and the uh, the pushback tug has done exactly as predicted, half a job. So once he has disconnected, ensure that we do set the uh, the parking brake so we don't uh, we don't go anywhere. Once engine two is stabilised, we will run our after start flows. The after start flows then consist of setting the mode selector back to normal. We then want to come over to the uh, overhead panel. APU bleed can come off. We would pop on the anti-ice if that was going to be required today. Today it is not. APU master can then come off. We're then going to arm the spoilers. We then want to reset the rudder trim to make sure that that is zero. Set your flap configuration for departure, which today is flaps one and then we're going to set the trim setting. Now the trim setting, if you recall from the previous tutorial, is given to us on our final load sheet. Today, let's just double check what that value is. In the received messages, that final load sheet is a takeoff CFG of 30.5. Always ensure you set the correct 
CFG just here. You do not want the zero fuel weight CFG, it has to be the takeoff weight CFG 30.5. In order to set this then, all we're doing is going to align the figure 30.5 to this little triangle just here. And that is done literally by dragging hold of the wheel and setting the trim. Obviously, it's a little bit of guesswork because you can see the values go up in five. So that would be 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Ours is 30.5, so pretty much bang on the, or just above the, uh, the 30 point. So we have to eyeball that a little bit, but technically anywhere in this green band should be valid. One important point then to mention here that the difference between the A320 Neo and these older A320s that we've got from the Phoenix is that the older A320s do not have rotation law, which means that setting this value correctly is even more important. So with that all done, we can run the after start checklist. So the after start checklist, anti-ice is off, our ecom status is checked, pitch trim is 30.5 and that rudder trim is zero. We would then ask ATC for our taxi clearance. We're going to obviously just clear ourselves today. We're taxiing to holding point mic 1 of runway 23 right. Once we've got that taxi clearance, we'll do the taxi flows. So we want to make sure that the weather radar is turned on. Ensure transponder is set. Auto brake max TO config. And then once that ATC clearance has been given, we can turn on our taxi lights. Time to release the parking brakes and make our way around to our departure point. Once again, the terrible pushback from uh, from the tug driver means that I'm just going to utilise engine one here in order to uh, spin us around, get us back on that uh, on that taxi line. So at this point, it's a good opportunity to do what's called a heads check an acronym so the P standing for performance that's basically checking your Q&H and the performance for your data is still valid so the Q&H is 1010 it's going to be a flex takeoff the E in PED stands for engine out procedure we know it's a standard engine out procedure at 1800 feet or above we're going to be able to make the right hand turn to the Mersey holding point. That is all set up in our secondary flight plan. The D in PEDS stands for departure. So we know we're on the Samba 1 Romeo departure. And the S is the stop altitude for that departure, which is 5,000 feet. And we've got 5,000 feet is all set. Now it's a matter of just making our way down to the runway and as we do this we can uh, run the before takeoff checklist. The before takeoff checklist I like to do usually when I'm taxiing in, uh, in a straight line. One of the other things you'll need to do as well and you can do this either back at the gate or on route depending on what works for you but we need to do the flight control check so probably best to slow down just a little bit for this we need to check we can go full left and then we want to go full right and neutral we want to go full up and then full down neutral and then we want to check the rudder which is going to affect my steering as well so I'll just slow down here a little bit as I'm using the rudder axis at the moment to steer so rudder we can check full left full right and neutral let's continue with the taxi before takeoff checklist then to the line so the flight controls have been checked Departure briefing is confirmed. Our flap setting is config1. We're then going to check the FMA and takeoff data, which are these values here. So we'll read out 137 blue, 140 magenta, climb nav blue, 1 FD2, 5000 blue, and the flex of 64. After all that's done, it's a case of just listening and monitoring ATC, following the taxi instructions as we get ourselves to mic 1. That pretty much concludes this tutorial, the taxi out to the runway. We will see you in the next video when we will do the full 
takeoff and departure from runway 23 right via the mic one intersection thank you so much for watching if you do have any questions please do leave a comment down below and of course if you have found this tutorial series useful please hit that like button and if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any more future videos in this series thank you so much i'll see you all again very soon bye bye for now